Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to do a lab on identity and access management. In the last video, we looked at the concepts of IAM. In this video, we'll understand how to implement those concepts. You'll notice on the top right hand side of the screen, the region I have selected right now is Mumbai. To navigate into identity and access management, I can search for that, IAM, I can search for that and click on this, or I can go down to security, identity and compliance, and I can click on IAM. Let's do that. Alright, so right now I'm in identity and access management. I hope you notice something. On the top right hand side, the region has now been changed to global. This is very important. Identity and access management is a global service, which is why we don't see a region over here. Instead, we see the word global. On the left hand side, we have the different options that we discussed, like users, groups, roles, and policies. Let's start by creating a new user account. You can do that by clicking over here, or we can also click on users over here. Right now, I have one user account, which is over here, but I'm going to create a new one. I'll click on add user. And I'm going to give it a name. Let's call it as CLI admin. Next, we need to select the AWS access type. And we have two options for this. Option number one is programmatic access. This option can be selected if you plan to use this user account to access AWS from API, CLI, or SDK. Option number two is AWS management console access. This option can be used when you want to access the AWS console from the graphical user interface, which is what we're doing right now. If you'd like to use both of them, they can be turned on as well. Right now, I'm just going to leave it at AWS Management Console Access. We also need to select a password. We have two options over here. We can go for the auto-generated password, which means AWS will assign a password, or we can set our own custom password over here. Right now, I'm going to use the option called auto-generated password. Using this option over here, we'll make sure that the user has to change the password when he signs in for the first time. All looks good right now. I'm going to scroll down and click on next permissions. We have three options to provide permissions. Number one, we can add the user to an existing group. Number two, we can copy the permissions from an existing user. For example, I have a user over here, I can select this user and copy the permissions to the new user called CLI admin. Number three, I can attach an existing policy to this user account. Right now, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to go down and I'm going to say next review. Notice what it says over here. It says the user has no permissions. We are okay with that right now. We can review the settings. Username is CLI admin. The access type is management console access. The console password type is auto generated and it requires a password reset when you log in for the first time. I'm going to click on create user. Now the user account has been successfully created and we get some more information over here. When the user has to log in, this is going to be his sign in URL. It's very important guys. This is the URL that will be used by your AWS users. Over here, it has my AWS account number. In your case, it'll have your account number. One more very important thing to remember, you see the password of the user over here. This is the only time you will see the password. Once you navigate away from the screen, you will not be able to see the password again. So it is recommended that you securely store the password. The recommended option is to download the CSV file so that you have that password whenever you want to retrieve it. Now let's try to log into the user account. I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to open a new private window and I'm going to try that link over here. Alright, so it has my AWS account number. I'm going to type in the username which is CLI admin and I'm going to type in the password as well by copying from here come back over here and paste the password and click on sign in. Alright, I've logged in. Now I'm going to change my password and I'm going to plug in the new password. Okay, and I'm going to say confirm password change. 
All right, I've logged in. I want you guys to notice on the top right hand side, I have the username and I have the AWS account number. I also have the region into which the user has logged in. Right now, the user has no permissions at all. We can verify this. I'm going to try and access S3 and let's see what happens. It says access denied and that's how it should be because we haven't assigned any permissions to this user account. Right? Let's go back. Okay, now I'm going to close this and we'll understand how to create a group. So I'm going to go over here to groups and I'm going to create a new group and I'm going to call this group as S3 admins and I'm going to click on next step. We need to attach a policy. The policy will provide the permissions to the group. It is not necessary to assign a policy but right now I'm going to do that. I'm going to search for S3 policies and I'm looking at this one Amazon S3 full access. Just going to select that and click on next. So we have the group name over here and we have the policy that has been attached and I'm going to say create group. Alright now the group has been created. The next step is to add the user into this group. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to say add users to group and I'm going to add this guy over here CLI admin and click on add users. That adds the user to that group. We can verify this. The group was given the permission of S3 full access. If I go back over here and if I try to refresh my screen, I should have access to the buckets. We can try that. I'm going to do a refresh. And straight away you will notice that we are able to view the buckets. So that's how you can provide permissions to the users. You can provide permissions directly to the user accounts, which is one way of doing things, but it can be tedious. If you have to create multiple user accounts and attach policies to them, that can be a time-consuming task. Instead, we can create a group, attach a policy to the group, and add all the users into that group. Right, let's go back. All right, now let's talk about roles. We spoke about roles in the previous lecture, where we understood that a role is similar to a user in that it is an identity with permissions and it is designed to be assumed by a user or a service. We also looked at an example where an EC2 instance was trying to access an S3 bucket. By default, the AWS services do not have access to each other. In that case, we would have to create a role that provides access to the EC2 instance to access the S3 buckets. Let's try to do that right now. I'm going to click on new role over here, create new role. We first need to select who is going to assume that role. In the example that we just discussed, we have an EC2 instance that is trying to access an S3 bucket, which means the role has to be assumed by the EC2 instance. And that's what it says over here, allow EC2 instances to call AWS services on your behalf. So we are trying to create a role that can be assumed by EC2 instances. So I'm going to click on select. Next we need to select a policy. A policy that provides the required permissions. Over here I'm going to look for S3 and I only want to provide read-only permissions. So I'm going to select this one over here. Amazon S3 read-only access. Just select that and click on next. We need to give it a name. So I'm going to name it this way. I'm going to say EC2 S3 and I'm going to say read only access. Right? EC2 S3 read only access. And I'm going to create that role. Now that the role has been created, we can go ahead and assign this role to EC2 instances so they can read the objects in S3 buckets. Right now, we're not going to do that. We'll see how to do that in the video on EC2. Right? Now let's talk about policies. We spoke about policies. A policy is a document which can be used to provide permissions. There are two types of policies. You have AWS managed policies and you have customer managed policies. What we are seeing right now are AWS managed policies. You can see that over here. These are all created by AWS. However, we can also create policies. 
The way to do that is this option over here. We can click on Create Policy, and we'll have three options. We can start by copying from an existing AWS Managed Policy. Click on Select. We can select any one of these policies and build our policy from that. That's option number one. Or option number two is to use the policy generator, which is a very easy option. We'll try that. I'm going to click on select over here. We first need to select the effect. The effect can be allow or deny. We then need to select the service on which we are trying to provide access. I'm trying to provide access on Amazon S3 or AWS S3. So I'm just going to go down over here and select Amazon S3. Using the Actions menu, we can select Granular Permissions. You'll notice there are so many permissions related to S3, and we can be very granular. For example, over here, I'm going to provide this permission called Get Object. So this policy will allow you to get an object from an S3 bucket. Next, we need to provide an Amazon resource name. An Amazon resource name is a unique identifier for every object in AWS. So I need to get the ARN of the bucket on which I'm trying to provide the access. And I can get this from S3. So I'm just going to drop down the services and I'm going to open S3 in a new window or a new tab. Go down over here and I'm going to click this bucket. There's an option over here that says copy bucket ARN. Just going to copy that. Come back over here and put that ARN over here. And I'm going to click on Add Statement and click on Next. So this is the policy that we created right now. You have the ARN, you have the action, the effect, the statement ID, and this is the auto-generated name of that policy. Of course, we can change that and also provide a description. Before we save the policy, it is always a good idea to validate the policy to see if it's going to work or not. Over here, it says the policy is valid, no syntax errors. Now we can create that policy. Right now, I'm not going to save that. I'm going to cancel out, and we'll look at the third option, Create Policy. The third option is to create your own policy. If you know how to code in JSON, well, you can come down over here and type all that policy statement in JSON format. All right, so I'm going to cancel out over here. And if you wanted to view the customer managed policies, you just change the type over here. You'll have the option to only view customer managed policy. So this one has been created by me. I'm going to reset it back to all. Let's say you want to know what's happening inside this policy. You are interested to find out what permissions have been provided. You can just click on that and Amazon will show you the policy statement. Right, so that's all the topics that I wanted to discuss in this video. In the next video, we're going to look at some really interesting and important topics. We'll understand how to activate multi-factor authentication on your root account. We'll understand how can we set the password policy. And you look at this URL over here. This is a really complex URL, something that is very hard to remember. We'll also understand how to customize this URL. So there's a bunch of interesting topics coming up in the next video. If you have any questions about what we learned right now, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to address that. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'm going to catch you in the next video. Thank you.